yes, this is live. So if you're doing something like this, be super, super careful. All right, so let's get to it. What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Alrighty, in today's video, we're gonna be doing some rearranging over there in the power wall area. What I would like to do today is maybe get my new solar combiner box installed over there. I actually bought two of these, so whenever I add the other two charge controllers, you know, I've got another box to add all of that stuff in. What we need to do today is disconnect the old solar combiner box, or at least the one I'm temporarily using right now. You know, and the wires are all strung out pretty much everywhere. And then we need to move the wires that come through the wall over like another joist or 16 inches or so. That way I can come in from outside and straight down into one of these boxes. Here's the new solar combiner box. It's a little bit better than the one I was thinking about using. I actually ordered a different one. I didn't really like it, so I returned it and then ordered these two. The reason I bought this one is because it has 12 slots and that gives me enough room to do a fuse on the positive and negative side of each solar string, plus two circuit breakers so I can turn stuff on and off. Sure, I could do it from the fuses, but it's pretty nice having both. This one is IP65. If for some reason you wanted to put these outside, it's got a little seal going around the outside edge there and it's got a rubber seal going around the edge right here this one also comes with two copper bus bars which is pretty nice and look at that they even labeled it neutral and ground although we'll probably do with those what we want and of course it comes with your standard din rail on the inside uh, does have a couple places for knockouts on the bottom and on the top does have some marks on the side But I don't think those are technically knockouts Although you could probably drill into the side there anyway and later on whenever we hook up all the solar panel wires I'm gonna do all the furls again. And I'll probably use black again this time and That's just because I have quite a few of those and those fit and I basically just want them all to look the same that's pretty much it. Got this off of Amazon if anybody was looking for something like this. Same with this. This might have actually came in a whole kit all by itself. All right, so I think this is going to be the rough design that we're shooting for on the wall. So this box right over here is going to be the solar combiner box that goes straight to the inverter. So solar is going to come in from the top and then basically exit out the bottom and go straight into the inverter. Later on, whenever I add more solar, I'm going to be using these two charge controllers right here. So basically solar is going to come in from up top and then go in the top of the box over here, go through the fuses, etc., and then go into the charge controller. Basically, I'll have another one of these over here as well and then once it does its little charge controller things I can add conduit that'll go straight down into the parallel box basically where the battery is parallel at because these need to be hooked up to a battery that one over there is already connected to the inverter which is connected to the battery so this is going to be the rough design that's going to go on the wall the spaces in between things may change just a little bit but we have this much room to work with all right so basically what we're going to start with today is at least that box right over there and over here in the power wall area right here you can see my temporarily installed solar combiner box we're going to get rid of this one install the other box probably right here and at this current moment only the positive leads from the solar panels have fuses. And I'd like to have a fuse on the positive and negative wires plus the circuit breakers. And that's why I got the 12-way box. Anyway, we're gonna disconnect this stuff and then fish the wires back through the wall. And we're gonna come out that hole right there, which I already drilled. And I actually started disconnecting some of the wires here. And then I realized the camera wasn't recording. So anyway, that's about as far as I got. Yes, this is live. So if you're doing something like this, be super, super careful, all right? So let's get to it. And I already disconnected two of them and put tape on there. Yep, that's not 100% safe, but that's what we got right now. So let's All right, we'll go cut this. and just kind of scrape this down a little bit so all these pieces weren't protruding up a little bit so I could put this box right here. And I'm just gonna use this brick line right here for my 
straight line. So we're just gonna throw this pretty much right here, kind of equal with the front of the inverter. Be a little tight on this side, but that's all right. Mark it and drill it. Boom, there we go. Nice. Might actually be putting this box up here once or twice, and that's just so we can cut the holes for the conduit. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it's not gonna be centered in here, but it'll go to the right side just a little bit, and that'll be, that'll be just fine. All right, I'm gonna pull this back off so I can drill a hole in this a little bit easier. All right, we need to drill out this hole right here, and I think I'm going to remove that bus bar to do that. And of course, you would think I would have a bigger drill bit or something bigger than this, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to drill it out with this and then use a Dremel tool for the rest. Oh yeah, gotta go quite a bit bigger. Boom, there we go. So we can do like another quick little temp install so we can see where the bottom conduit's gonna go. I guess we could actually measure from here to there for that piece. I got a coupler for that as well. Here. And I can cut a piece that's maybe eight and a half inches. All right, well, I think the best option that I have right now, which is probably not ideal, but we're gonna go with it anyway. So I have this 90 degrees right here, which goes in this back corner right here. And then I think we're gonna immediately go into another 90 degree angle and go straight up into the box. And I think we're gonna cut out the same exact hole just on the bottom side. I could technically go into a 90 back here, go up the wall, and then go into another 90 right into the side of the box. But we might run into a problem because there's a mounting bolt right here for the front cover. We could go a little bit higher and go right through there. It's not a good idea. Mm. No, I think I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna do the S curve down here and go right up in the bottom. I think that's what we're gonna do. But this one, we only have to do three quarters of an inch. Yay! I already had one inch conduit up here on the top, so I just stuck with it. They used to have a lot more strings coming down here, and then I went to uh, 6S on the inverter, so I have less strings. All right, let's cut another hole right here. And then we need eight and a half of this PVC conduit right here. Nice. Hell yeah. All right, let me get this installed here with, let me find the right screwdriver. Oh yeah. All right, I did buy these bushing insulators. I don't know if I really need them because it's PVC, you know, up there, but I think we're gonna use them anyway because it'll make it look nice. Oh yeah, that looks real nice. That looks great. Boom, there we go. One box is installed. We have the conduit coming off. I know it's a little dark up there to see, but there we go. One going straight into the first box. Now, the next thing I gotta do is put the next fitting in there and then run this conduit to the bottom of the inverter. Well, next what I was going to do was pull up this cover so I can disconnect the solar input to the inverter, but I think I'm gonna leave it connected. Maybe just disconnect it from here and do a really good tape job. Maybe I'll cut off the ends and then tape it. Snip, snip, snip. So I was thinking I was gonna come over this way and then immediately go straight up, but I might even be able to just go up and then do a 45 right up into it. And it would be great if I could just use the piece that I already have. We're gonna try to bend this piece and see if we can go just right up into the box up here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna do a 45 on this piece, hopefully.
Look at that. All right, it's not bad. I can do that. All right, I don't think that's too bad. I might be able to straighten that one out just a little bit, but we come down, go to an angle there, and then we go right up underneath, which I can straighten all that stuff out, hopefully with some clamps, but I think that's gonna work. I think that's what we're gonna do. All right, so next we can at least cut the six gauge wire that we're using and install the circuit breakers and all the fuses. Okay, so, okay, so we can throw in some of these fuses or we could at least set it up kind of how it's going to be set up. And then we can at least get those wires installed, the ones that go to the inverter, or at least cut them. Sharp corners, but that's what we're working with. There, snip, snip. So I'll put you right there, slide you over. All right, I'll cut these ones a little long for the moment, and then we'll cut them down if we need to. Snip, snip. All right, we're gonna try to get these wires inside the circuit breakers. I can't see very well, but I'm just cutting insulation off if I can. Boom, there we go. All right, so we got both circuit breakers wired in. These bends were definitely a little tricky to do. They're actually bent a little more for my liking, but that's okay, it'll be it'll be good. Uh, if I didn't mention, this is 6AWG THHN wire. This is the stuff that you get at like Home Depot or Lowe's. All right, next thing we're gonna do is wire in some of the solar panel wires over to the fuses. So we'll do two positive, two negative, two positive and two negative. I kind of want to leave these a little long, you know, just in case. I don't know if it's really that necessary. And whenever you hook these fuses up like this, you always want to put the solar panels in on the top. So make sure you go in from the top side. All right, there you go. We got one side fully wired. I don't have the fuses or anything in there quite yet. We'll probably do that here in just a minute, but uh, I did want to get your guys' opinions on having both positives next to each other and both negatives next to each other on the fuses right here. Uh, should I go positive, negative, positive, negative, or should I just leave it how it is? I guess either way is probably fine. Anyway, we come down from the conduit right here, go up, down into the fuse, come out of the bottom, and then we go behind, and then we kind of parallel into the top of the circuit breaker right here. And then of course, out of the circuit breaker, down through the conduit, and then into the inverter. So there you go. All right, I'll get started on the next side. Holy crap, look at that mess. Whew, that's all right, we'll get it. All right, so we got everything wired up. Boom and done. Got her all wired up. Honestly, it took a little bit longer than what I thought it was gonna take, but we finally got her. Look at that, I even put little heat shrink labels on every single wire. Um, it does look good, but I'll, honestly, I'll probably end up changing that later just because I want it to look a little bit better. But for now, it'll be good enough. All right, so I was gonna do a quick little rundown of how this is wired just in case you missed it or you're not familiar with combiner boxes. So I've got four strings of solar panels up on the roof. One, two, three, and four. And I have those labeled PV1 North and PV1 South, PV2 North and PV2 South. All right, so basically solar comes in from upstairs through the conduit over here, does a little S curve and then goes into the top of the fuse, through the fuse, out the bottom, goes behind everything, and then these two strings right over here, positives parallel right here, and the negatives parallel right here. And that's basically how all this is wired. So all this over here is exactly the same. Solar comes in through the top of the fuses, goes around the bottom, and then parallel right over here on this circuit breaker. And that's pretty much it. I do have an extra set of wires coming down and I just kind of loosely wrap those around the outside of the box. Um, I just have an extra set just so I can have some, maybe some test solar panels, or if I want to add one or more string, I've got an extra set of wires right there. The wire size that I'm using right up here is 12 AWG, and this is THHN. The wire size down here after they parallel together is also THHN, but it is 6 
AWG. I probably could have went with maybe 10 AWG, but honestly the wire run is only like 30 feet, so 12 gauge is plenty enough. And each string only puts out 8 amps at 200 volts pretty much, so yeah, there you go. Um, next thing what we're going to do is probably check voltages and stuff down here on the bottom side, and then we're going to insert the fuses. The fuses that I'm using right here are the Busman Solar PV fuses, and the part number is PV-15A 10F. All right, 15 amps, 1,000 volts DC. Uh, I got these off of Amazon. They were pretty cheap. All right, so uh, we'll check the voltages here real quick, and then we will hook it up to the inverter and call it a day. Can you see that? I have no idea, but I'll, I'll read it to you. All right, we're gonna check the voltage of all the strings. I don't know how much voltage we'll actually have since it's kind of late in the day now, but we'll check it to make sure everything's good anyway. All right, so PV1 North is at 202.7. PV1 South, 206.9. PV2 North, 205. Well, 205, and then PV2 South, 201.0 that's actually pretty good right now all right next thing we'll do is throw in all the fuses i guess we'll check voltage on the top of the circuit breaker 204.3 203.1 all right, I guess we can throw the levers and start charging the batteries. All righty, so over here on the inverter, you can see we're connected to the grid. We're in bypass mode, and that's basically because I didn't have the solar connected. It's winter time, etc. So we'll just do one string at a time. So right now I'm going to flip PV1. And if there's enough sun out there, we should... Oh, there it goes. All right, so solar panels showing up, and then probably connect here shortly. We have 210 volts and we finally connect i would imagine that'll drop down a little bit basically why it drops so much is because we're going through the mppt right now okay we're just kind of jumping around it's probably cloudy out there and look at that we're doing a whole one amp or 90 watts <laughs> all right that's fine all right i'm gonna disconnect pv1 and then i'm gonna connect pv2 all right pv2 Two is only showing 64 volts. Why we have no power? Hey, hey, you. Why are we not getting any solar power? There is no sun. <laughs> I think there is just a snowflake that just flew by. All right, Beyonce, that explains it. All right, well, there's a good reason why we don't get much solar right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put both of them together and we're gonna just button this up and call it a day. Boom and done. We got her all buttoned up. I think that looks pretty darn good. I guess the only thing I really have to... What are you doing? All right, so the only thing I really have to do now is maybe put a clamp, you know, maybe right there or right there to secure this to the wall, basically. I don't know if I'll put one down here or not, but I might. We'll see. Yeah, so basically once I secure that, you know, it'll be nice and perfect. One solar combiner box installed. All right, there you go. One solar combiner box installed. And if I say so myself, I think it looks fan-freaking-tastic. Uh, the only thing I got to do now is obviously install the other two charge controllers and then the other solar combiner box. However, that's probably going to be in a couple of videos, you know, down the road or whatever, because I don't even have another rack of panels set up. But I will need some, of course, because it's winter time and I'm getting, what, one amp? That's terrible. Anyway, one more part of the journey complete. And of course, everything I used in the video, since everybody asks, it'll be listed in the description down below. All right, well, that's pretty much the end of the video. Don't forget to like that smash button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more battery and solar videos. And I will see you on the next. Oh, actually, I can't do that yet because I need to run my ground wire. So we're just going to call it a day right now. Um, uh, um.